Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. Hey, just a quick message before we get the show started. We're reopening registration for our coach certification on October 7th. If you're someone that's had his or her life changed through nutrition and you're ready to give back, then this could be a great program for you. If you just want to learn and gain knowledge for yourself, this could be a great program for you. And whether you want to start a side hustle, a full-on business in nutrition coaching, or you just want to add this skill set to what you're already doing in your career, this is a phenomenal program. It's a six-phase course that ranges from the fundamentals and basics of nutrition science. We go into teaching you about setting and changing macronutrient profiles, creating custom nutrition plans for people. We teach you the art and psychology of coaching, and we give you a ton of practical applications doing sample check-ins. The best part of the program is that you will be paired with a digital mentor, which is one of our top coaches that will give you feedback throughout the entire course. Registration opens on October 7th. And if you're interested, go to workingagainstgravity.com forward slash coach hyphen certification, or just go to workingagainstgravity.com and click the become a coach button. And if you're on the fence, if you've been on the fence for a while, I highly recommend you sign up at this launch because this is the last time that we will have this price. Uh, In January, when we reopen, it will be significantly more expensive. So if you're interested, check it out, workingagainstgravity.com forward slash coach hyphen certification. Hey, this is Adi Kaju, and you're listening to the WAG podcast. Today's episode is a little bit different. We had some people apply to do a live coaching session with me on nutrition and any obstacles that they're encountering. So today's episode is going to be a recording of one of those coaching calls. Hope that you get some value of listening to this person's story and how we talk about what's going on for them and maybe relating it to yourself. If you love this podcast, we would really appreciate you taking the time to leave us a five-star review and tell us what you love about it. Tell us what you're taking away from it. It is really the best way for us to get this podcast out there and to reach more people, and we would really appreciate you taking the time. So thank you, and let's get into this coaching call. My first question for you is, (laughs) if you could wave a magic wand... And mm-hmm. this call could go exactly the way that you hoped and dreamed. What would be the outcome at the end of it? I would love some other tips, tricks, or strategies to stay disciplined in an environment that you can't completely control. And also have some ways to like make myself less sad about eating healthy foods. I like my whole attitude towards healthy eating to not be so negative. I guess that would in one concept that would be great right now like i don't like eating rat food and that's why i'm having problems so i do it but i don't enjoy it so i mean i i love to cook i love to eat and eating making the things that i want to eat healthy has been a huge challenge especially because i well now we're not eating out a lot so that's been kind of better but um previously like before we were all quarantined in the house i eat out frequently so that's not great either. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. We've been eating out significantly less. Well, I mean, we're not eating out at all. So when I say significantly less, we went from two, maybe three times a week to none. So I totally can relate to that. Okay. I have a couple things, but I'm not, even, I'm going to ask a bunch of questions before I sure. start diving in a little bit deeper, but I'm already excited because I'm already mm-hmm. like, Ooh, we got some things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, Uh, So tell me a little bit about your background. How did you, I know a little bit that you used to do pageants. Mm -hmm. And so in pageants, and I I have a friend actually who was the orange queen of Louisiana. And (laughs) she tells me all the time about it. So pageants are an interesting little community for sure. Absolutely. So just tell me a little bit about your history with fitness, nutrition, how you got to where you are today. Okay. Um, well, my story cut really short. Um, I was on active as a child. So I did date at the entire 
um, up to like grade in high school. Um, so it was very, uh, like, unfortunately active. Like, you know, that I would leave school, go to your practice from two until five and be at dance from five until like 10 30 at night. Um, so I never had any issues when I was younger. And then, so I get to college and I start doing pageants. And of course, you get to college and other things happen, like giant Rice Krispie Towers in the dining hall and alcoholic beverages. And then, um, so I started like picking up some weight, not a lot, because um, I, but I was just significantly less active. Um, and then, of course, after I've gotten out of shape and started eating junk, uh, then I decided I want to do pageants and I'm trying to like forcibly get myself back to that like high school body weight, body type like really, really quickly so that I can be competitive for um, like swimsuit. Um, this American does not do swimsuit anymore. So uh, that would have helped me about five, six years ago. But um, I was still competing in this essay, so it was really important for me to like, be as trim and fit as possible. I had worked with, I, I got a personal trainer like once, one of the girls recommended, and she like, gave me some nutrition counseling, basically just like basically an eat this, don't eat this list. And it was kind of like, here, here's what you can eat. Here's what you, eat, what you can eat these weeks. It was really restrictive almost, but I mean, it was effective. But she was ridiculously expensive. I was in college, so um, I did that for like a year or so. And then trying to do it myself, I fell deeper into, I guess, the not ideal weight category, but then was kind of like stuck. So then at that point, I paid for a um, personal trainer just for fitness and tried to do the nutrition part myself, which ended up me doing really unhealthy dieting things to like be able to, I mean, I was working out really heavily like twice a day, like three or four or five times a week and then like not eating carbs at all. Um, it was like extreme keto, basically like what, and no carbs, but not as much fat because it would make me feel sick when I was like running. So I noticed that much. And then um, that's when I started trying to dabble into low carb, no carb, keto, paleo, and recommendations from all the girls. And then um, I noticed though, because I also, my one of my jobs is I'm a performer. So I, um, I'm an actress in musicals and regional theaters um, in Florida. So um, when I would go on the keto diet, I would get the keto food really badly, which would be great until I had to sing something. So then I was congested and feeling like headachy and migraine and couldn't really hear right. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like I thought it was just continually getting a cold. And it was that when all of a sudden I would eat a carb and I would feel so much better. And then I could sing again. So I'm like, okay, well, this is not obviously a great fit for me just because I, I can't at any point, you know, be able to not be able to sing, like that people are making me sing, I need to be able to do my job. So um, now I'm just like, all right, well, I'm not competing in pageants right now, I'm trying to make a move to New York City um, in the near future. Um, my equity card, I'm going to hopefully go to the city, you know, get a little Broadway shot. You know, it's also really important in this industry to be really fit as well. I mean, not like for aesthetic reasons, but just for like the fact that you're literally, you know, dance, leaving, turning, belting, three-hour shows eight times a week, uh, sometimes more. Um, and so I'm trying to look at it from that aspect of, like, want, want my body to be great for, like, the physical demand I put on it and less to, like, be that 110-pound stage demon that was winning pageants back in the uh, whole day. Also, I realized the other day that I'm no longer 18. Uh, um, you just realized <laughs> You know, I, my, my, my knees were hurting the other day. I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a spry chicken anymore. So, um, I'm wondering if like maybe that's having, why I'm having issues. And um, I know so that's kind of my background and my history of like, I never really had nutrition issues because I was so active. But now as my activity level decreases, I'm seeing all my horrible food choices. Like uh, my dad always like laughs like that I was raised on pop tarts because I had a pop tart, a piece of bacon, and a carton of orange juice every day for like 18 years of my life. That was my breakfast. And I mean, like now my dad has like high blood pressure. Hmm, I wonder where that came from. All the sodium we ate. Trying to look at from a different perspective, but still being really annoyed that I don't. I can't get the pain. Like I'm just steadily getting larger instead of like being all enlightened and the shrinking. It's like, like now I know a lot of things, but I can't really apply the things that I know. So a couple things, questions, and just getting a little bit, I want to make sure I'm hearing what I'm, I'm understanding correctly. So it sounds like you grew up in a home that didn't necessarily have the best eating practices. Mm -hmm. And um, then you got 
you went into and you were super active, so it didn't really matter necessarily. Right. Like it never, it did matter, but it didn't trigger you to real to think about it that much because it just right. it never presented itself as an issue to you. And then you went into pageants, and that maybe added another layer of what healthy actually eating is and Mm -hmm. how to lose weight and how to look a specific way, which you mentioned that it was effective so that you were able to lose the weight. So do you feel that that experience shaped what you deem as eating healthy today? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Especially because it worked, you know, cutting car- cutting calories severely, not having carbs, all those things that put your body in the position that if they work, you don't eat bread for six months and you don't have any gut. So, but I mean, it definitely like kind of narrowed my focus on like what's good and what's not good. Okay. Okay. We're going to dive deeper into that in a bit, but I'm going to put it on the shelf for a second. Okay. For sure. What about... In your home right now. So in your questionnaire, you mentioned that you don't have complete autonomy over the food that is in the house. And so there are Rice Krispies and Pop-Tarts that are around. Who's in your house? Oh, I live, well, you know, I'm in Malayo, I moved back home after college. So um, mostly because for my job, I tend to like travel from theater to theater. Um, So I don't really have like a set residence, but my permanent residence is with good old mom and dad. And my parents are in the military, so my mom's actually stationed in Japan right now. So she's not here because she cannot be. But it's just, yeah, me, my dad, and my dog. And my dad does most of the grocery shopping. Like, I go get, like, the, the health stuff that I like, which is, like, spinach and coconut water. Like, okay. <laughs> but um, but he does most of the shopping. He's, uh, we try to we both kind of do our own thing for, like, breakfast and lunch and, like, dinner. We try to have the family just because um, we are all here mostly, and that's kind of where the the, the conflicts collide. Like, I can try to eat really good, like, during the day, but then, like, dinner comes, and it's, like, KFC or McDonald's or, hey, I made, I made dinner, and it's, like, biggest bowl of pasta with all of the meat inside. Right. So, and you made that dinner, or your dad made that dinner? Sometimes it's, it's like, half and half, like, trade-offs. So, like, if I obviously make things that I know he's going to eat, so if I, like, tried to throw some kale at him, he would not want to participate and probably go get something else, honestly. Okay. And it's important, too. It's, a, I'm, it's sounding like it's important to you to have some meals together. It's, like, your time to be together and connect, yeah. and that's really special time in general. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into okay. – you've, you've had this, like, long history of – Um, often whenever we try a diet and it really worked, it kind of burns in your brain of this is, this is the way that I need to do things. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's the only way that's going to work for me. And especially if you've tried other things and they haven't Mm -hmm. worked, it's reconfirming in your mind that that thing is just the only thing that's going to work for me. In your situation, it sounds like the thing that worked might not have, it might it might not actually be what you're describing as healthy. Hmm. So it's possible that this, this approach of eat this and not that, mm-hmm. and the list of avoid these entirely, mm-hmm. it sounds like, and, and please tell me if this does not resonate with you at all, because mm-hmm. we've only been talking for 15 minutes and I might be totally off. Right. It sounds like the eat this and not that has has created a bit of a mindset in your head of these things are good, these things are bad. If I eat these bad things, then that means I am being unhealthy or my diet is bad. Right. No, that's That's accurate. accurate. And I'm here to tell you that that isn't necessarily – that is just like – it is a way of going about things, and it Mm -hmm. could work for some people. Um, Mm -hmm. In my – experience it can put people in this it it could serve people for a short period of time and help provide boundaries and rules Mm -hmm. and then it's then the boundaries and rules can often feel restrictive and then it it takes any of the enjoyment out of fueling and eating and then you're you're having this experience that you mentioned where I get really sad about eating celery or I get really sad about eating rabbit food when healthy food doesn't necessarily have to be celery 
or right. or rabbit food or kale right. or any right. or spinach or coconut water. I can come up with many other options. But it sounds like that mindset might have put you in this place of feeling restricted. And then mm -hmm. most people, when they feel restricted, go right away into wanting to rebel. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't want to be restricted. Part of you is like, I do want to be restricted because I want to get all these results. And then the other part of you is like, no, don't tell me what to do. I want to be able to eat what I want. And oh, there's this absolutely. like, there's this battle between these two people of who right. do I believe and who one is like me right now. And right. then one is me in the future. Yeah, and absolutely. it looks like the things that you've tried have been kind of in that category. Like uh, mm -hmm. keto is also eat this, not that to some degree. Um, right. And it sounds like maybe when you tried it, you were having, you were having very little carbs and also little fat. Mm -hmm. So it, so it, it really might not have actually been a hundred percent keto. It might've just been really, really low calorie, mm -hmm. which also creates, can create some issues. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you were having your, uh, basal metabolic rates, like between 1100 calories and 1200 calories. And yeah. that, um, from eating so little calories for so long, it definitely, your body is going to accommodate and just burn less. Yeah. yeah. That's super annoying. Yeah, <laughs> totally. But it's not um, its not a death sentence. And it's not something that you don't have to only resort to extreme measures to get the results that you're looking for. It just might, the path might look a little bit different. Okay. I want to um, open your eyes to that healthy eating doesn't have to be negative. And maybe we can just work on changing your definition of what healthy eating means in general. Right. So my next question for you is, if I asked you right now, what is healthy eating? Or like, what does a healthy diet look like? What would be your answer? Well, I probably, probably would give you the government dietary guidelines answer. <laughs> if I like, but like to me personally, I don't know if this is more fruits and vegetables than anything else, probably like, you do need whole grains, but um, as far as like, if I was at my ideal weight, I probably wouldn't have any issues eating those like small amounts of whole grains and carbon because I know like that's what packs on the poundage for me and kind of like spot at it. But I know for people that like don't have that affinity towards carbs, like having a cute little, you know, couple of servings of whole grains a day because your body does like to run on carbs. So you gotta put some in there eventually. Uh, no added sugar, probably limited natural sugar in fruits, protein off the wazoo, um, because what else you can eat if all you can eat is vegetables and fruits. <laughs> not, uh, probably some nice nuts, limited snacking. No, uh, snacking probably is not the greatest because then you tend to like be out of portion control. Like I guess mine was snacking, so like I have a little plain snacks, so, like not that many snacks. Different, different colors of things that's healthy yeah. when when you're talking about that what about that is terrible like when you're talking about like what about that where you're like oh that's just like so terrible uh the lack of sugar is a sad is a sad thing um <laughs> that that that's terrible you know swapping out i mean i know processed foods are not good for you but man they do taste good so um that's kind of a hard thing to to let go of completely because that's, that's the biggest thing. thing. And everything, everything else, like, like I, that is, is obviously fine and tastes great when you put it, like, in a nice plate that looks yum. But the, the processed food category is not part of the healthy diet in my brain. So mm -hmm. that's the part that I'll miss the most. So could you see a possibility of – so let's say you had a day of eating and mm -hmm. you ate – I'm just going to, like, rattle off a bunch of foods that coincide with your – day your healthy description okay. so um we have eggs in the morning and you have spinach with it with a, a side side of vegetables and then you have maybe some turkey bacon with it and then next for lunch you have a big salad with some yeah. like a little scoop of rice like the cute little you, i like how you mentioned yeah. the cute little whole grains <laughs> cute little, you know. so a little side of rice and some chicken as well then you have a snack that is um, a, maybe a small fruit bowl. And then for dinner, you have salmon with 
broccoli and pot sweet potatoes. And for dessert, you have ice cream and a brownie. Well, well that, that doesn't, doesn't sound, sound bad, bad at all. So if you, does that make the day unhealthy? No, I'm from, because, because I, most of the things today were healthy and the ice cream and the brownie. I guess it would depend on how much of the ice cream and the brownie did you have. Would that make the day unhealthy? I would probably, in my mind, count that as a, a, a failed day. Like, oh, I was doing so good until I ate this ice cream. So. Yeah, so I want to challenge you here and to look at the day as a whole instead mm -hmm. of each meal as a, a failure or a success. Okay. Because when you see only one meal as a failure or success, every single time you step up to eat something, you have an opportunity to fail. And I want you to set yourself up for more and more opportunities to succeed. So yeah. if you're right now, you are finding that you have limited, you're having, you really can't imagine your life right now without processed foods and without sugar, which I have zero judgment about that at all. Like that's <laughs> totally fine by me right now. We are working on, I'm not here to tell you to revamp your entire life. I'm here mm -hmm. to maybe inspire you that small steps in the right direction can mm -hmm. actually get you closer to where you want to be. And you don't have to revamp your whole life to change your whole life. Actually taking really small steps that you can continue to succeed will completely change your life versus this huge massive change that you can only maintain for so long that you absolutely hate and makes you miserable is probably just going to ruin your life versus and then you're just you're just going to want to go back to all the things that you used to do which is yeah that's, that's kind of like, like the cycle, cycle I'm in now yeah mm -hmm. and so instead it, I would. I want you to think about your whole day as a as a whole, not just each meal as I was successful or I was not successful. That whole day that I just described, mm -hmm. in my mind, is is an absolute success because if if you take that day and you compare it to a normal day for you right now, or maybe like a a typical day, or what your what your a day that you're struggling with right now, would mm -hmm. it be better? Oh um, yeah. So that's all we're aiming for. And, I mean, it, and it would be better more nutritionally than like what I'm doing now because like I also intermittent fast. I got, I'm, so because that worked for me in the past, but I continue to do that even though like I don't eat healthily and do it anymore. Then I realized that, okay, like at the end of the day, maybe all I had today was a Pop-Tart, four grapes, and then the McDonald's my dad brought home, which is not a lot of calories per se because I only got six nuggets and a small fry, but definitely not very nutritious. Right. And yeah. that is just contributing to this, the cycle of I'm going to restrict mm -hmm. and then rebel because I've restricted mm -hmm. myself. So that's my first thing for you. I just want you to think about like your whole day as a whole and, and however that works for you. So each, so that it's not this, like I'm making a decision of success and failure right now. And right. the goal at the end of that is that your whole day is just slightly better than the day before. It doesn't mean, okay. it doesn't mean that, I mean, you could have ice cream and a brownie twice in a day. And if you still had two of those other meals where you had mm -hmm. more vegetables or you focused on um, getting protein from great sources or you had a whole, or you're eating things that are more um, nutritious, mm -hmm. not necessarily good or bad. Just right. like more nutritious, then uh, that's better. And like, it is a huge success. Right. I can do that. That's, that's my first thing for you. Okay. Um, my second thing, man, I was like so present with you in that moment that it just like totally flew out of my brain. Yeah. But I'm getting like, like, I'm, No, I'm taking, taking notes. notes and I'm like, okay, like that, that's an easy, that's an easy mindset thing I can do. Like I can just do some positive self-talk and like talk myself out of this one meal is not bad. Like let's read that at the end of the day. And that'll be a nice little mental exercise I can do like super easily. And even the things that seem super easy, they're going to be hard on some days. Right. So I don't want you to underestimate it. I don't want you to think, oh, this is going to be, you know, this is super small. I only have to be a little bit better. I can still have my Pop-Tart and I can still have my, my brownie, my ice cream. And as long as I have 
some other meals that are healthy, then mm-hmm. I'm it's going to be easy, like a breeze, mm-hmm. because it's still going to be hard because you have well over a decade of these stories that you've been telling yourself mm-hmm. that this is healthy, this is not healthy. This means I'm successful. This means I'm a failure. And I might as well just eat the McDonald's or the KFC with my dad because because whatever, I already had a Pop-Tart today and it's just easy. Oh, this is what I he's having. I've had that so many days. Okay. Yeah. So my next thing, it came back to me as we were talking. My next thing is that because you have been restricting for such a long time and you've gone through these phases of eating very few calories, this shift, I would encourage you to spend some time not getting on the scale and not really, not really focusing on the those types of metrics, just because right now it's about getting your body back to a place where it's used to eating more food and mm-hmm. it's more comfortable eating more food and the habits are more important. And I don't want the scale to deter you from making these types of changes. Okay. So it would it would it would break my heart if if you ate more food all of a sudden and you're like I'm eating healthy and I'm like I gained 2 pounds or I gained a pound which might happen just because because you know your body's going to have to get used to having more food it could go the other way I'm just like I'm just either way okay. I don't want that number to influence your decision as to whether you want to treat yourself better Right. Because what's going to make you feel awesome is the fact that you're taking better care of yourself, you're making better choices, and that you're feeling successful every day in your nutrition, not feeling like I have this super narrow definition of what successful looks like. So if I can't satisfy this super narrow definition, then I'm a failure. Right. Right. And you can be successful every single day, even if you have a pop star. That's a, that's a great, great feeling. feeling. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I, I can, can absolutely get down with that. You are liberated. <laughs> um, no more guilt. No more Catholic pop guilt. And it will come up. Like the, the, the guilt will come up. It will come up. And it's going to be hard some days. And you might you might especially have challenges with your dad. And you might want to – he doesn't have to have the kale. And he doesn't have to have – you don't have to have kale either, just so you know. Right. You don't have to have kale. You can note that down. Don't have to have kale. Okay. <laughs> you, don't, that <laughs> you don't want kale. That's totally cool too. But it might be inspiring to him to see you feeling not – It might, it's not inspiring to see someone eat in a way that that is more nutritious when they're – acting like it's the hardest thing in the world and it sucks and they would love to be doing anything. There's nothing inspiring about that. Yeah. It is inspiring to see somebody eat healthy and more with more nutritious foods and also enjoy their life and also be happy and just like it's so inspiring to see someone like that. And then and yeah. they in the face of temptations they're like, "You know, I'm actually going to choose this instead or I'm going to I'm going to have a little bit of that and not feel guilty about it." Right. Um, very, very challenging to do. Super challenging to do. But that, imagine the impact that could have, not just for you, but for your whole household. That's, That's a great goal. Um, yeah. And that, that way you can, can kind of be like pushing them in the right direction without trying to shove it down. Oh, throat. nobody wants things shoved down their throat. No. The best way to get someone not to do what you want them to do is to give them unsolicited advice to tell them how to live their life because that those two people, the one that's like, I want to eat healthy and I want to, I want to get all these results. And the one that's like, well, this pop tart and this McDonald's sounds awesome. And that's what I want to eat right now. If you start speaking to the one that wants pop tarts and McDonald's saying, we're not going to listen to you right now. You're not the right. You're not the one that we're going to listen to. They're going to defend themselves. Mm-hmm. And the, the healthy ones, like, even if they know what you're talking about is, is the right thing kind of like talking to an addict who's an out al- let's say they're an alcoholic mm-hmm. and telling them they have a drinking problem they know they have a drinking problem it's not it's not a secret to them so right. you pointing it out is only bringing up the that the one on the one on the side of their shoulder that's like you don't tell me i have a drinking problem i don't have mm-hmm. a drinking problem like they already know you don't have to tell them instead 
just being there and being supportive mm -hmm. and taking care of yourself is the inspiration that people need to be able to be like ready to ask you for help. Right. Right. Okay. Ooh. All right. Okay. That, that, that didn't home a little bit. And Shoot. so my homework for you, and okay. I'm going to check up on you in four weeks. All right. I'm going to check up on you. So you're being held accountable. This is not the last yeah. time that we speak. Okay. Um, my homework for you is to journal about what healthy eating has meant to you in the past and what it could mean to you in the future based on this conversation. Okay. And I want you to include in your definition of healthy of this a requirement has to be that you enjoy it. Okay. You have to enjoy your diet. Yeah. It has, and it doesn't have to be this negative thing that's like forced upon you. You're what this new definition that you're creating is one that you're choosing. Not, it's not being forced upon you and it's meant for you and it might not work for other people. It's meant for you where you're at right now and it can change in the future. Right. But this is just for you right now. But the okay. only requirement I have for you is that you have to write something out that you would actually enjoy and be proud of. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I can do that. I can do that. And then I'll also, since I'm journaling, I'll write what I actually did eat and uh, see if that changes over the course of the journaling. Yes. Yes. Amazing. I could talk to you for hours, I swear. And we could just like go deeper and deeper. But I think this is like a lot that we've talked about and I don't want to completely overwhelm you. And these are good. These are really, these are, these are simple things to work on that can seem easy, but they simple usually also means difficult. And there's going to be challenges and obstacles that come up. And even if challenges and obstacles come up, it doesn't mean you're a failure. Even if tomorrow you only eat Pop-Tart and McDonald's, the fact that we have had this conversation, there's going to be a little seed in your mind of change starting to happen. And as long as you continue to bring awareness around it, I'm positive that you can make changes. Okay. Okay. Before I leave you, do you have any questions that questions, burning desires, um, concerns, anything? I guess I just, I just, the burning the, the burning is question that's horrible grammar. Um, would just be that like do do you think that off the rip like like having a like low carb no carb is better than high carb moderate carb? Like can I eat the pasta or not? Is the burning question. So I, this is my belief okay. and I've worked, I've been doing this for a long time and okay. worked with a lot of different people. And I truly believe there is not one that is better than another. Okay. I think that I truly believe, I also don't believe that there is not one that works for you forever. Okay. So I don't think that, I think there's often times we have something that really works for us and then mm -hmm. human beings like certainty and they like answers and they like to like things to be neatly tucked away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, this is works. This is what I'm going to stick to. And then when life happens and it's unavoidable, let's say mm -hmm. you get pregnant or let's say you get a new job or let's say you move to New York and, and your, your temptations change or mm -hmm. your access to food changes. Like right now we're in the coronavirus and people's access to food is completely different right. and you can't do the things that you were doing before. It's significantly mm -hmm. more difficult Something new could still help you be healthy and maintain your results. It's more about being flexible mm -hmm. and um, trying to stay away from putting morality on the way that you eat. Like it's not about being a good person or a bad person. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I don't, it's more about staying away from that. And I notice a little bit of that when we're having this conversation of yeah. this means I'm being good and this means I'm being bad. Yeah. And so if I told you one was better than the other, you could latch onto it and then you'd be like, this is the answer. Yeah. Okay. But there is yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the annoying part about it is that there is no one answer. Right. Okay, okay, no, that was that was a solid, solid answer to me trying to put things back in a box. <laughs> this is gonna so. keep coming up. I don't think I've like I don't think I've healed you or 
I don't think I've like completely transformed your life in this. Maybe I did. I'll get, okay. Maybe I did. We'll see. But I think this is just going to keep coming up and you're going to keep having this voice in your head that tells you this shouldn't be right. This sh I shouldn't be able to do this. This is, this means I'm, because that's been there for a long time. Right. But you can also realize that it's not you in your mm -hmm. head. It's just like, have you ever been driving down the street and you think, man, I could totally ram this car into that other person's car. You know, you don't actually believe it. Like you don't want to do it. No, it's just no. like this random weird thought that comes into your mind. You're going real so like it just means. Yeah. Like and it's like, what would that feel like? I sometimes I'm sitting at the, the, the table and I'm like, wouldn't it be weird if I just like chopped my hand off? <laughs> or chop the table in half? I think that a lot. Yeah. Okay. It's like, mm -hmm. what would, and it's an obvious, it's just this random thing your brain just like puts random thoughts in your head and it's actually not even you that's having the thought. It's mm. just because the next minute you could have a totally different thought. So, you know, you can just choose a different one. Right. Right. And it's like a game of noticing when it comes up Okay. and choosing a different one. All right. Which is very difficult. I don't want to, I don't want you to underestimate the effort that is required. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll get me, but I'm like going in with like a nice positive mindset that it will be hard, but it's not hard enough that I can't do it. Exactly. And you really, I want you to see success as just being slightly better than the day before. Just a little bit better. Slightly. Like it doesn't, even if you ate exactly the same, but you moved your body or if you added one whole meal and mm -hmm. that's even slightly better than the day before is success. All right. Slightly better. We can do that. Well, it's so nice talking to you, Kalea. It's nice to meet you as well. Thanks again for like your team, like reaching out. I thought, you know, that was like a, and I'm not really going to answer these emails, but they did. And you guys reached out and followed through. And I appreciate that. Like, Heard so many great things about um, Wag, so I'm just like really excited to like finally get some, some nice insight. Yeah, but. this is so fun. I always get so nervous before these calls, and then everyone has been so beautiful and amazing and inspiring. And we're not weirdos, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, the more concern is like, well, you think I'm a weirdo? <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm like, you know, like you have more information than me, therefore, we're just gonna listen, bend the knee, take some notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am going to stop our recording, but thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.